Are there any places in the world that no person has ever been to? There are definitely pretty big chunks of the world's deserts, jungles and polar wastes that have never been seen by human up close. But are there any islands that haven't been visited by people at all? Unlike the middle of a desert, islands can be accessed pretty easily from the sea and much of the exploration of the world has been done by boat. So are there any large islands left that no one has ever set foot on? This question has intrigued me ever since I read one of my all-time favorite books, Pocket Atlas of Remote Islands. In it, the author talks about a piece of rock sticking out of the southern ocean called Peter I Island. She ends the page with the words, There is nothing more to say about a land that no one has set foot on. Disappointingly, this line turned out to be false. Later expeditions to the island did manage to make landfall, but the words stuck with me. So if it's definitely not Peter the First Island, then what islands would qualify? My first stop was the Wikipedia list of largest uninhabited islands. Being uninhabited is quite an important criteria for an island to meet in this case. Top of the list is Devon Island. While it is currently uninhabited, a fur hunting outpost existed in the early 20th century. Before that, countless generations of the indigenous Inuit people visited and lived on the island. That last bit is what makes it unlikely that there are any notable islands that were never visited in the rest of northern Canada. Even in olden times, the native peoples roamed pretty far north, and any island not visited by them was probably checked off by European explorers or NATO military personnel during the Cold War. If not northern Canada, what about Greenland next door? Looking at a map, there seem to be countless islands dotting its coast. There could definitely be a few islands here and there, never graced by a human footstep. However, none that I could verify. The region is well traveled by native and European travelers, so like northern Canada, there is a big chance each island was touched by a human presence. Staying at the same latitude, we move over to the Arctic islands above Scandinavia and Russia. This region was first explored in the 16th century by those searching for a northeast passage to Asia. They wouldn't find it for three centuries, but along the way they set foot on many new islands. In the 20th century, the region was further explored by Soviet scientists and military personnel. From what I could find, no major island was left bereft of people visiting it. With the northern reaches of the world ruled out, I turned to the other side of the globe, Antarctica. This region provides fertile ground for research, as the continent itself was only first landed on at the tail end of the 19th century. Far away from the inhabited world, and only populated by a few hardy scientists, even now there must still remain an unvisited island somewhere along its seemingly unending coast. You might not know this, but Antarctica is actually an archipelago. The thick polar cap sits atop islands of bedrock. For the purposes of my question, I'm going to discount islands permanently encapsulated by the Antarctic ice sheet. Those don't really feel like islands to me, as they are just part of the icy landscape. Instead, I'm focusing solely on islands that are, at least part of the year, not encased by frozen ice. The first place I looked was the Antarctic Peninsula. This part of the southern continent is riddled with islands, big and small, but because it's the warmest part of Antarctica and the closest to the civilized world, it's also the most explored. As I went through the list of islands, potential candidates were crossed off one by one. None remained. So I perused maps in search for islands in other parts of the Antarctic. I came across something called the Pobeda Ice Island. This turns out to be an ice island that periodically forms and breaks up again. It is created when an iceberg breaks off from a glacier on the Shackleton Ice Shelf. Guided by wind and currents, it then runs the ground on a shoal north of the ice shelf. There the ice island stays for a decade or so, until erosion causes it to break free and drift out into the open ocean where it eventually melts. This process repeats itself every 40 to 50 years. While an interesting concept, an iceberg is not the same as a permanent island, so it doesn't qualify. My last hope was Marie Birdland. This part of Antarctica was never claimed by any nation, before the 1959 Antarctic Treaty System froze all sovereign claims on the continent. This, combined with its remoteness, makes this one of the least explored parts of Antarctica. Then I found Cruisen Island. Could that be it? There were only a few satellite photos and a few old maps. No photos on the ground or from the ocean. For a while I thought I had found an island no one had ever set foot on. 
When I inspected one of the maps closer, I realized it had quite a bit of detail, and even an icon indicating a penguin colony was present on the island. That last bit probably meant that people had gotten in close to the island. After a bit more digging around, I found an article in the 1978 Antarctic Journal that went into penguin colonies in the area of Cruisen Island. And there was a photo that looked down the slopes of Cruisen Island, showing up the penguin colony labeled on the map. Proof of human presence. I almost lost hope. How could I possibly find an island no one had ever been to? It's pretty easy to find proof someone went somewhere. It's a lot harder when the whole point is to find nothing. Instead of finding proof, I had to look for the absence of articles and photos. Luckily, I didn't give up. I took another look at that Cruisen Island map. It was part of a series that mapped the entire coast. There were three more islands to the east of Cruisen. I dug up that map and inspected it. There were three islands there. Two of them, Grand and Shepherd, were more detailed and encapsulated by an ice shelf. Third, however, Forrester, was everything that I looked for. No details and all by itself in the ocean. Time to look up Forrester Island. I could find nothing. No photos, videos or articles about penguin colonies. I turned to Google Earth and zoomed into its location. I found this weird elliptical area full of drift ice. Not an island at all. Looking at the map view, the rough outline of the island appeared twice. What was going on? I checked out another satellite view of the area, but here the location of Forrester Island also appeared as a weird glitch on the map. What was going on? Did Forrester Island even exist? After some more sleuthing, I finally found a satellite image that did contain Forrester Island. It's this simple 12 by 10 pixel blob. When I overlay the map onto the satellite image, you can see the actual island does not match up with the location as depicted on the map. Perhaps this is also the reason why Google Earth is confused on where to place this island. From everything that I could find, and crucially could not find, Forrester Island seems to be an island that no one has ever set foot on. So how big is it? It's roughly 6 kilometers long and 4 kilometers wide, with a surface area of about 20 square kilometers. This means it's slightly smaller than the island nation of Nauru. For those not knowledgeable about Pacific island nations, that roughly translate to the southern end of Manhattan. So is that it? Is Forrester Island the biggest island never visited by humans? As far as I could tell, yes. But as I explained early in this video, it's really hard to research something which by definition will have very few records of it. So perhaps there is a larger island, somewhere on the globe that has never been set foot upon. The moment we go there though to verify, it will of course no longer be an unvisited island. Hi everyone, my name is Captain Robo and thanks for watching. This was a new type of video for me, let me know what you think.